for those of you who I don't know, my name is Leah. I met Aaron almost 10 years ago when we were paired together to live as roommates in our freshman dorm at Miami University. Now, when you put two teenage girls away from home for the first time and you lock them in a 12 by 15 foot room, you may get one of two things, worst enemies or the very best of friends. And luckily in our case, it was the latter. Uh, we hit it off immediately. We spent the next four years having dance parties in our room, eating obscene amounts of ice cream, um, taking midnight trips to Walmart, and traveling the world with our awesome roomies, Katie and Kim. Some of the best times of my life were those with you, Erin. Um, we remained close even after graduation when Erin moved to Maryland for graduate school. And we made a pact that if we couldn't find any good men to marry, <laughs> We would establish an alternative household, adopt a child from Sri Lanka, and live happily ever after. This is the God's truth. But a good man did come along, <laughs> Matt. And he was perfect for him. Not only was he cute and funny and smart and musically gifted, but he thought Aaron's 80s style clothes were awesome. And he was always down to order dessert. Right? We couldn't love him. But it goes deeper than that. And I, you know, at the wedding today, and when Nick was just up here, they're talking about Aaron and Matt's connection. And I think it's something that, that you've all seen, but you don't have the hard job trying to explain it in words. And for weeks I struggled uh, to find the words to describe that deep connection, to tell their love story in a way that, that does it justice. Um, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, so I googled it, and uh, I typed in maid of honor speech, and would you believe 843,000 results came up. Apparently I'm not the only one who's had trouble with this. Um, one of the common suggestions was to use catchphrases like, to love, laughter, and happily ever after. But um, I could see Matt rolling his eyes when I was just even thinking about it, and plus it's way too cheesy and trite for such a unique couple. Um, another common suggestion was to tell the groom the like humorous things he needed to know about the bride's true nature now that he was going to be married to her, um, to tell him what he needs to know to make her happy, to how to take care of her. Um, Matt doesn't need that. Matt knows Aaron better than any of us ever have or ever will. He protects her, he makes her laugh, and he gives her his unconditional love and affection. For any of us to try to give Matt advice about Aaron, it would be absurd. So um, I give up. I guess the best that I can do is say that everything about you guys, everything about this day is beyond my ability to describe it in words. Your beauty in that white dress, the way you two look at each other, the gratitude that I have, that we all have to be part of your lives, and the joy of seeing two awesome people who are so completely in love joined together forever. So let's raise our glasses and a toast to the things in life that are too beautiful for words. Aaron and Matt, I know you will have an indescribably wonderful marriage. There are no two people who deserve it more. To Mr. and Mrs. Severson, 